Welcome to Bashley Valley Calvary Chapel. Before we begin, we're going to uh, do our announcements, get the welcome and all that stuff out of the way. Once we begin the candlelight service, then there'll be just a flow that runs all the way through with worship and then time in God's Word. So we're glad you guys are here for our second candlelight of the day. It's kind of the opposite. Usually this 11 o'clock service is jam-packed and the first is uh, a little smaller like this, so it's just reversed today. But we're glad that you guys are here this morning just to worship together. And uh, God's presence is here in a special way at the 9. And we anticipate that he'll be here in a very special way too during this service as we worship, as we seek his face. And again, we're so glad that you guys came to, uh, to do just that and to be a part of this. And uh, so, again, before we begin, before we pray, just a, a few quick announcements. Of course, here we are in the holiday season. And with uh, tomorrow being Christmas and then next Sunday being New Year's, we don't have any of our Calvary Connection small groups going on at this time. They'll resume again in January. So uh, January the 3rd, our Revelation study on Wednesday nights will be back on track. 6.30 here at the church, we have worship, and the youth groups are here as well. And at 7 o'clock, youths go next door to their areas for their youth group meetings. And adults, we go to the coffee house typically for our study. And again, we're in the book of Revelation. And then later on that week, on Friday, men's study will be back on track at 6 o'clock in the morning, Friday mornings here in the coffee house that Sunday, first Sunday in January, 6.30, uh, Roman study. One of our elders, Rob Evans, teaches will be uh, kicking back in again. Is that correct? All right. And that's at 6.30. That's right. And that's at Brad and Anika Evans's house. And then also on the 9th, our Essential Christianity class at Preston and Kathy Stewart's home on Tuesdays will be back on track again. So just all those opportunities will be up and running for our new uh, stuff this coming new year. And then, of course, we just started a study in Matthew on Sunday mornings. We're only a couple weeks into it. We've done chapter one, and next Sunday we will continue with our study in the Gospel of Matthew. So, again, we're just thrilled that you guys are here this morning to worship with us and to be here for this special candlelight service. So let's pray, and let's uh, get underway. Father in Jesus, holy and awesome name, we come before your throne of grace with thankful hearts. God, we can never thank you enough for your blessings in our life and the way you love us, Lord. We're amazed. We're amazed that 2,000 years ago that Jesus, you came, humbled yourself, took upon flesh, and there you were as this helpless baby. You came with the ultimate goal of giving your life on the cross for us so that we could have eternal life. And we cannot separate Christmas from the cross. And Lord, neither would we try. We just ask that you help us keep this all, the big picture and perspective as we've come together today to worship you and to praise you that you loved us enough, that heaven came down, that love stepped down in the person of Jesus. Lord, we pray that you fill our hearts with your presence in this time of devotion and adoration and worship, Lord, and inhabit our praises. Father, uh, keep us safe from any influence that is not of you, from the world and our flesh and the enemy, and may your spirit alone rule and reign in our hearts and our lives and in this place today. So come and have your way now in this candlelight service. And we pray all this, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
Hark the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn King. Peace on earth and mercy mild, God and sinners reconciled. Joyful all ye nations rise, join the triumph of the skies. With angelic hosts proclaim, Christ is born in Bethlehem. Hark the herald angels sing, glory to the new. Hail the heaven-born prince. Hail the heaven-born prince of peace. Hail the son of righteousness. Light and life to all he brings. Risen with healing in his wings. Mild he lays his glory by. Born that man no more may die. Born to raise the sun. second birth Hark the herald angels sing Glory to the newborn King King of heaven King of heaven come down King of heaven come now Let your glory reign shining like the day King of heaven come of heaven rise up who can stand against us you are strong to say in your mighty name king of heaven come christ by highest heaven christ by highest heaven adore christ the everlasting lord late in time behold him come Offspring of a virgin's womb, mild he lays his glory by. Born that man no more may die. Born to raise the sons of earth. Born to give them second birth. Hark the herald angels sing, glory to the new. of heaven king of heaven come down king of heaven come now let your glory rain shining like the day king of heaven come king of heaven rise up who can stand against us you were strong to say in your mighty name King of heaven, come. King of heaven, come. King of heaven, come. King of heaven, come. King of heaven, come down. King of heaven, come now. Let your glory reign, shining like the day. King of heaven, come. Oh, oh. King of heaven, rise up. Who can stand against us? You are strong to say in your mighty name. King of heaven, come. King of heaven, come down. King of heaven, come now. Yes, Lord, come now. Rule and reign in our hearts and lives as we worship, Lord, as we bring an offering before our King this morning.
Over the skies of Bethlehem appear to stop While angels sang to lonely shepherds Three wise men seeking truth Travel from afar Hoping to find the child from heaven Falling on their knees They bowed before the humble Prince of Peace Now bring an offering of worship to my King No one on earth deserves the praises that I sing Jesus, may you receive the honor that you do Lord I bring an offering to you we bring an offering to you the sun cannot compare the sun cannot compare to the glory of your love there is no shadow in your presence No mortal man would dare Stand before your throne Before the Holy One of Heaven It's only by your blood And it's only through your mercy Lord, I come And I bring an offering of worship to my King No one on earth deserves the praises that I sing Jesus, may you receive the honor that you're due Oh Lord, I bring an offering and I bring an offering of worship to my King No one on earth deserves the praises that I sing Jesus, may you receive the honor that you're due Oh Lord, I bring an offering to you Oh Lord, I bring an offering to you. Oh Lord, I bring an offering to you. I bring an offering to you. We bring an offering to you. We are an offering to you. Be seated. This morning we ask a question based on that old wonderful traditional Christmas song what child is this and we find in God's word that Galatians 4 gives us this reality but when the right time came God sent his son born of a woman subject to the law God sent him to buy freedom for us who were slaves to the law so that he could adopt us as his very own children Those wonderful passages, prophetic passages from Isaiah, declare this reality that unto us, Isaiah 9, 6, for a child is born to us, a son is given to us, and the government will rest on his shoulders. These will be his royal titles, Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. Asking the question, 
what child is this? Jesus came and offered himself in the form of a helpless baby. And he came as a child offering ultimate hope. Isaiah chapter 9 and verse 2. Prophetic passages that the Holy Spirit inspired through Isaiah said that the people who walk in darkness will see a great light, a light that will shine on all who live in the land where death casts its shadow. In Matthew chapter 4, fulfillment of that prophecy came to fruition. And by inspiration of the Holy Spirit, Matthew reiterated this reality and the fulfillment of the prophecy. That this fulfilled Isaiah's prophecy. In the land of Zebulun and of Naphtali, beside the sea, beyond the Jordan River in Galilee where so many Gentiles live, the people who sat in darkness have seen a great light. And for those who lived in the land where death cast its shadow, a light has shined. And he spoke of Jesus' ministry. When he said, from then on, Jesus began to preach. Turn from your sins and turn to God, because the kingdom of heaven is near. Christmas time, we celebrate the reality that that's exactly what happened. That heaven came near to us in the person of Jesus. That love stepped out of eternity into time. As we celebrate Christmas, it is our prayer that God would expand our sense of awe, that the Lord would expand our sense of understanding to the reality of who He is and what He's done. And it was so hard for us in our limited realities as just mere human beings to comprehend the reality of what's happened, but it's our prayer that as we spend this time worshipfully before the Lord this morning, that the Lord would truly deepen our appreciation and expand our understanding and our sense of awe for who He is and what He has done. Because as Jesus proclaimed that reality, he preached that the kingdom of heaven is near, and certainly that was the case. Isaiah 9, 6, the passage states this, for a child is born to us. In Matthew chapter 1 and verse 23, the Holy Spirit inspired Matthew to reiterate what Isaiah had prophesied. Look, the virgin will conceive a child, and she will give birth to a son, and he will be called Emmanuel meaning God with us. Of course, Isaiah 7, 14 says, All right, then the Lord Himself would choose the sign. Look, the virgin will conceive a child, and she will give birth to a son, and will call him Emmanuel, God with us. And as Isaiah prophesied this centuries before it came to a reality, Matthew reiterated that reality. And in Isaiah 9, 6, the Word of God then went on to proclaim this reality. As He had talked about a child was given, that spoke about His humanity. But when He says a son is given to us, that speaks of His deity, that He is the Son of God. In John chapter 3, verses 16 through 19, the most well-known passage in God's Word says this, For God so loved the world, humanity, that He gave His only Son, so that everyone who believes in Him will not perish, but have eternal life. That word believe means to enter into a wholehearted trust in. And when we believe and understand and know that Jesus Christ is Lord, that we understand that He is God in the flesh, and the purpose for His coming was ultimately to give His life on the cross for our sins, and three days later be raised from the dead, and to put in place a new covenant. It's in that moment that we embrace His gift of eternal life, that we pass from death to life. When we believe in Him, we pass from perishing into the reality of eternal life. And in verse 17, it says that God did not send His Son into the world to condemn it, but to save it. For there's no judgment awaiting those who trust Him. But those who do not trust Him have already been judged for not believing in the only Son of God. Their judgment is based on this fact. The light from heaven came into the world, but they loved the darkness more than the light, for their actions were evil. And I'm so thankful that the Lord didn't make it rocket science, did He? He made it simple. He says in His Word, choose this day whom you will serve. He says, I set before you blessing and truth. I set before you curse. You choose life, you choose death. And when Jesus came, He came to give life. And when people reject the life that He gave, then they continue on in their darkness and ultimately their reality is separation from God for all eternity. And the reason Jesus came 2,000 years ago was so that all who would call upon His name would have eternal life. That's why a son was given to us. 
Isaiah also said the reality would be this, that the government will rest upon his shoulders. Folks, the ultimate reality of this is yet to come to fruition. When Jesus returns someday, he will come as the king of kings to establish his kingdom on earth. And so we get a glimpse of that from what Isaiah said and also from what the book of Revelation says as John the Apostle shared this reality, that she gave birth to a boy. By the way, that's not Mary, that's the nation of Israel. Gave birth to a boy who was to rule all nations with an iron rod. And the child was snatched away from the dragon. It was caught up to God and to his throne. So it's a panorama, an outline of history that Jesus did indeed come. He came to his own and his own received him not. And he shined his light throughout all the world. And even with the enemy's attempts to try to destroy him, it never worked. And after Jesus had fulfilled his mission, had lived his life, had given his life upon the cross and was raised from the dead, he ascended to the right hand of the Father. And folks, again, he's coming back someday to establish his kingdom on earth and throughout eternity. In Isaiah 9, 6, we'll look a little bit at the royal titles that were given to him. When it says that his name shall be called. So we ask ourselves this question then, what is in a name? And we find this reality, biblically speaking, that it's a reflection of what a person was or prophetically would be, certainly in Jesus' case. And these titles reflected the character of the Messiah Jesus and what He would be. And these passages and prophecies came again centuries before He arrived on the scene. So His name then would be called Wonderful. Wonderful, Pele is the root, or the Pala comes from that. And it means a wonder, a marvel. Again, as we reflect on this reality of Jesus' is coming, isn't it mind-blowing, isn't it staggering to realize that the one who spoke creation into existence and created the entire universe loved us so much that he humbled himself and took upon flesh 2,000 years ago. That's our prayer that God would expand our sense of wonder and that we would marvel at this reality. It also means it's extraordinary. It's a hard thing to understand even. It speaks of God's acts of judgment, but also of redemption. And Jesus came to bring redemption, and if we reject the redemption He provides, then we're subject to the judgment because He's a just and a holy God. This word Pele, or wonderful, comes from Pala, to be marvelous again. To be wonderful, be surpassing, extraordinary. To be beyond one's power. To be difficult to do. To do an extraordinary or a hard or a difficult thing. And again, folks, this side of heaven we won't understand fully. But someday, if you know Jesus in your home in heaven, God will expand that reality and we will see more clearly and understand more fully the reality of what happened 2,000 years ago when Jesus came. Speaking of wonderful, Luke talks about this act of wonder and wonderful. In his account of the gospel, the recount of Jesus' is coming, sets it in time. That at that time, the Roman Emperor Augustus decreed that a census should be taken throughout the Roman Empire. This was the first census taken when Quirinius was the governor of Syria. All returned to their own towns to register for the census. And because Joseph was a descendant of King David, he had to go to Bethlehem in Judea, David's ancient home. He traveled there from the village of Nazareth in Galilee. He took with him Mary, his fiancée, who was obviously pregnant by this time. And while they were there, the time came for her baby to be born. And she gave birth to her firstborn child, a son. She wrapped him snugly in strips of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the village inn. And that night, some shepherds were in the fields outside the village guarding their flocks of the sheep. Suddenly, an angel of the Lord appeared among them, and the radiance of the Lord's glory surrounded them, and they were terribly frightened. But the angel reassured them, Don't be afraid, he said. I bring you good news of great joy for everyone. The Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born tonight in Bethlehem, the city of David. And this is how you will recognize him. You will find a baby lying in a manger wrapped snugly in strips of cloth. Suddenly, the angel was joined by a vast host of others, the armies of heaven praising God. Glory to God in the highest heaven and peace on earth to all whom God favors. And when the angels had returned to heaven, the shepherds said to each other, 
Come on. Let's go to Bethlehem. Let's see this wonderful thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. We do our best to try to imagine what it must have been like that night, what it must have been like for Joseph and Mary, what it must have been like for the shepherds. The reality is there was a wonderful promise fulfilled, a precious promise. Precious promise, what a gift of love. An angel tells a virgin that she's gonna have a son. Though it's a precious promise, she wonders how can this be? What will peace? Saying what it Joseph can't believe And her questions and her fears Are met with that overwhelming joy The God has chosen her No what a precious promise Mary waits as heaven comes to earth. Oh, what a precious promise. And oh, what a gift of love. Joseph makes his choice to do what few men would have done to take Mary as his bride when she's already carrying a child that it is not his own and oh what a precious promise Mary and the child will have a home. And shepherds stand on a hillside, their hearts racing with the news. The angel told them a star's light. Fills up the dark sky as the night of precious promise is unfolding. Oh, what a precious promise! No, oh, what a gift of love. The waiting now is over and the time has finally come for the God who made this world to roll back the curtain and unveil His passion for the heart of me. And oh, what a precious promise Lying in a manger in Bethlehem Oh, what a precious promise Lying in a manger in Bethlehem
Majesty laying in a manger A king like this Unto us is born a saviour The light, the light has come A king like this The highest name in the song of heaven A king like this Born of flesh into our suffering, the light, the light has come. He is Christ the Lord. He is Christ our Savior. I bow my heart before no other name. I bow my heart before no other king. King like this, a saving love that would not forsake us. Betrayed by a kiss and led to the cross for our forgiveness. The light, the light has come. He is Christ the Lord He is Christ our Savior I bow my heart before no other name I bow my heart before no other King We lift up our eyes We lift up our eyes, the light has come. We lift up our eyes, the light has come. We lift up our eyes, the light has come. We lift up our eyes, we lift up our eyes, we lift up our eyes. He is Christ. Christ our Savior He is Christ our Lord He is Christ our Savior I bow my heart before no other name I bow my heart before no other king I bow my heart before No other name I bow my heart before No other king A king like this A throne of grace that will stand forever The angels sing Glory, glory, hallelujah. The light, the light has come. The light, the light has Continue to reflect on God's word from Isaiah and those wonderful titles that were given Jesus. The title counselor. Ya'atz, and it means to advise, resolve, counsel, to guide, give purpose, and also to take advice. So my question is, who is the source uh, of your counsel? Or perhaps what is the source of your counsel? Well, take my advice. Make Jesus your counselor. He's the ultimate source of truth. He's the ultimate source of all that we need. In our challenging seasons, our difficult times, we come before Him and His living Word has the ability to meet us right where we're at. He is the source of our love, the joy, the peace, and the counsel that we all need, folks. 
And we come to a place of putting Him first in the chain as our resource as opposed to Him being the last one we come to, we find that as our counselor, He provides all that we need. As the counselor, again, He is the greatest source. Jeremiah speaks to this reality when he said this, that the Lord, you have all wisdom and do great and mighty miracles. You are very aware of the conduct of all people and you reward them according to their deeds. And again in Jeremiah in chapter 33, he speaks of this reality. That the Lord, Yahweh, the maker of the heavens and the earth, the Lord is His name, says this. Ask me and I will tell you. I'll tell you some remarkable secrets about what is going to happen here. And God revealed through Isaiah as well that He declares the end from the beginning. That He is the source that reveals all that we need. We also find that His name shall be called Mighty God. In the Hebrew, that's El Gibor. And it means God, Mighty One, Powerful, Warrior, Champion, Chief, Strong, and Valiant. And those are all wonderful and apt descriptions of who Jesus is and what He's done for us. When it speaks of Chief, I think of Him being truly our Commander in Chief before who we bow our knees, the one before who we yield. So we ask, is Jesus, according to God's Word, just mighty God or almighty God? Because some will say there's a difference. The reality, biblically speaking, that He is one and the same. Almighty God, El Shaddai. Jeremiah 32, 18 states this, that thou showest loving kindness unto thousands and recompensest the iniquity of the fathers unto the bosom of their children after them. The great, the mighty God, El Gibor, the Lord of Hosevaot, is His name. His name shall be called, and another wonderful title, Everlasting Father. Everlasting, odd from the Hebrew, means perpetually. A world without end. So there is an eternal aspect to this. When it says Father, in the context of Isaiah, Ab, it means as of God, as Father to His people, and this simply means as it relates to Jesus, that this title relates to Jesus' position as the source, the Father of our salvation. Of course, God the Father and Jesus His Son, co-equal in essence and power and authority within the triunity of the Godhead, but the Father is not the Son, the Son is not the Father. In this case, speaking of Jesus again, simply means that His title relates to His position as the source of our salvation, as He came to give His life for us, to provide it. And His very name, Yeshua, Yeshua, Jesus, means that Yahweh, the Lord, is salvation. His name shall be called the Prince of Peace. Another fantastic and awesome title. And that word, Prince, Sar, again, it means a head. He's a captain, a chief. General, governor, keeper, Lord, master, the prince and principal, the ruler. And he's the steward of our souls. He's all that we need. And of course, peace, shalom. Means completeness and soundness. And when we accept Christ as our Savior, when we accept His gift of eternal life, we come into a personal relationship with Jesus and He becomes our Prince of Peace. It's through Him and Him alone that we can experience this kind of a peace. A peace that passes all understanding, no matter what our challenges and difficulties may be this side of eternity. Jesus alone can be the source, as He is our Prince of Peace. He is also Yahweh Shalom. Thinking about Him being our Prince of Peace, in Zechariah, prophecies yet to be fulfilled, it states this, And now the Lord says, I am returning to Mount Zion, and I will live in Jerusalem. Then Jerusalem will be called the faithful city. The mountain of the Lord Almighty will be called the holy mountain. I will bring them home again to live safely in Jerusalem. And they will be my people. And I will be faithful and just towards them as their God. And folks, that's what we've seen. is some fulfillment of this prophecy with Israel becoming a nation again and the regathering of God's people to Israel. The reality is that someday Jesus will come and establish His kingdom on earth. And he will rule and reign from the throne of his ancestor David, fulfilling the Davidic covenant. And folks, this peace that the world needs will only come when the Prince of Peace establishes his kingdom on earth. And we need to pray for that reality. In Romans chapter 5, Paul the Apostle stated this truth. 
Therefore, since we have been made right with God, made right in God's sight by faith, we have peace with God because of what Jesus Christ our Lord has done for us. Again, through the reconciliation that Jesus brings by virtue and the reality of His gift on the cross. So therefore, since we have been made right, that means we have been made right in God's sight. His righteousness has been imputed to us. We accept Christ by faith. Then we're no longer at enmity with God because we have been reconciled to God by the Prince of Peace. And we know that we have eternal life, and it's all because of Jesus and what He has done for us.
Sing a church, God with us, Emmanuel. God with us, Emmanuel. Oh, God with us, Emmanuel. Oh, God with us, Emmanuel. Now we adore your name. Sing it one more time, lift your voice.
Gospel of Matthew. Joseph, as he considered this, fell asleep. And an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream. Joseph, son of David, the angel said, Do not be afraid to go ahead with your marriage to Mary, for the child within her has been conceived by the Holy Spirit. And she will have a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All of this happened to fulfill the Lord's message through his prophet. Look, the virgin will conceive a child. She will give birth to a son, and he will be called Emmanuel, God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord commanded. He brought Mary home to be his wife. But she remained a virgin until her son was born, and Joseph named him Jesus. We see Herod's response to this reality. Herod was furious when he learned that the wise men had outwitted him. He sent soldiers to kill all the boys in and around Bethlehem who were two years old and under because the wise men had told him the star first appeared to them about two years earlier. See, Herod thought that perhaps a rival had come upon the scene. He thought he was the king of the area when he had no idea really or clue that the king of heaven had stepped down into eternity. The soon and coming king who will rule and reign forever had come in the form of a helpless child. And no man, no army, no king such as Herod could stop Jesus from fulfilling his mission. In Revelation 19, we see the reality of when Jesus comes back to establish His kingdom on earth, that on His robe and thigh was written this title, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. You see, Jesus is Messiah. He's the Mashiach Nagi, the Messiah. He's also the King. And that's Mashiach Nagi means Messiah the King. Jesus is our Messiah King. So I would ask you this morning, is he the king of your life? Is he the king that's seated on the throne of your heart? Have you come to a place of putting your faith and your trust in him as Messiah, as your Savior, as your Redeemer? That's what Christmas is all about. That God loved us so much that he humbled himself to become one of us, to pay the price for our sins on the cross so that we could have eternal life so that we could receive the ultimate gift. Father gave the gift of His Son, and Jesus gave the ultimate gift of His life and eternal life so that we could know Him forever. And perhaps this morning, if you're not assured of that reality, if you've never asked Jesus to forgive you your sins, if you've never come to Him professing your faith in Him as God in the flesh, He's ready, He's willing. His presence is here to meet you where you're at, and perhaps even as we continue in worship, you could pray a prayer that expresses your faith, that you believe that Jesus is God, the Son, and the Son of God. You believe that He died on the cross for your sins, and on the third day He was raised from the dead, and that He's alive forevermore. You could ask Him to forgive you of your sins. In the moment you profess that wholehearted faith and trust in Him, in that moment you become a new creation in Christ. You become a child of God, and He becomes the King of your life. Isaiah 9, 6, again, we reflect on the reality that Isaiah said that unto us again. For a child is born to us, a son is given to us, and the government will rest on his shoulders. And those wonderful titles that we've looked at this morning, the royal titles of wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. This is the reality of who our Jesus is. And as we began our time today, we asked the question again, what child is this? And we began by looking at Galatians 4. And Paul was inspired to pen this, but when the right time came, God sent His Son, born of a woman, subject to the law. You know that God is always right on time? His timing is always perfect. God sent Him to buy freedom for us who were slaves to the law so that He could adopt us as His very own children. And when we accept Christ's gift of eternal life, we become His children. 
Galatians goes on to state this, and because we are His children by virtue of the new birth, God has sent the Spirit of His Son into our hearts, prompting us to call out, Abba, Father. And now you are no longer slaves or a slave, but God's own child. And since you are His child, God has made you His heir. And that's the reality for all of us who know Jesus today. I know it's God's heart that we would receive the ultimate gift from Him. And for those of us who have, we celebrate, we praise God, we thank the Lord for this gift that we know that when our time comes, when we breathe our last breath and step into eternity, it will be into the very presence of God. Do you know that as your reality? What child is this? He is Emmanuel. He is God with us. Sing 
praise is bring to the newborn King. Peace on earth, here with us, joy awakening. At your feet we fall. Angels sing. Angels sing, praise is bring to the newborn King. Peace on earth, here with us, joy awakening. At your feet we fall. Angels sing. Angels sing. on earth, here with us, joy awakening, at your feet we fall. Sing it, church, the door. Adore, oh come let us adore, oh come let us adore Him, the Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for the indescribable gift that you would give in your son, Jesus. And Jesus, we could never thank you enough for your love for us, a love that compelled you to step out of eternity 2,000 years ago, to humble yourself, to take upon flesh. And there you were, fully God and fully man. You arrived on the scene as we all did, Lord flesh and bone and blood. And you came to experience life this side of eternity, to identify with us and ultimately again to give your life as the Lamb of God on our behalf so that we could have eternal life, Jesus. And that's the greatest gift. And in this season of gift giving, help us to never forget that, Lord. And Father, we just pray that before we sing this last song that we're reminded as we see again the lights in our homes or around the town and even the lights as they shine from the candles this morning. We remember that you're the light of the world. You're the light that stepped into darkness. You came to rescue us, Lord. and That you shine your light in and through your people, so help us to be people who let your light shine, Lord. That we would be your heart and your hands and your feet to a lost world that needs to know and needs to experience and receive the ultimate gift found only in you. And Jesus, we thank you that as we see the trees in their homes or perhaps around this community that we're reminded again that the ultimate tree is in the shape of a cross where you laid your life down on that cruel altar for us so that we could live, so that we could spend forever with you, covered by your righteousness and your grace, Lord. Jesus, we praise you from the depths of our hearts. We thank you, Lord, that we've had this privilege together today to worship and to be in your word. And as we conclude with this final song, Lord, we open by singing, Hark, the herald angels sing, the King of heaven. Lord, we reiterate the reality that you are the King of heaven. You're the King of our lives, and you are the soon and coming King. So come, Lord Jesus. May your kingdom come, and may your will be done. In Jesus' name, amen. Stand for this final song, if you would. Let's worship. Jesus, let your kingdom come here. Let your will be done here in us. Jesus, there is no one greater. You alone, our Savior. Show the world your love. King of heaven, King of heaven, come down. King of heaven, come now. Let your glory reign, shining like the day. King of heaven, come. King of heaven, rise up. 
who can stand against us you were strong to say in your mighty name king of heaven come we are children we are children of your mercy rescued for your glory we cry jesus set our hearts to hold you that every eye would see you lifted high king of heaven king of heaven come down king of heaven Let your glory reign, shining like the day. King of heaven, come. King of heaven, rise up. Who can stand against us? You are strong to say in your mighty name. King of heaven, come. bless you and keep you may cause his face to shine upon you as he shines upon you let him shine in and through and out of you so that wherever you go people will see jesus the light of the world on your way out there are some uh, things you can take if you'd like some wonderful books um, on the realities the evidences of the christmas account and just some stuff for the kids everybody take a candy cane you're welcome to do that as well and we pray that you guys are blessed this christmas season have a great day